Well, uh, we're back on the chicken truck today. We're going to be doing some work on this door. Doesn't look too bad, right? Well, one of the worst doors I've ever seen. And this is a good door. We're gonna start by peeling off this outer skin from the inner structure and just to see if there's any chance at all that we can actually save this door. Well, before we can dig into the meat and potatoes, we gotta peel off all the petrified weather stripping, clean up the edge, and then now we're fighting with hardware that hasn't come out since about uh, 1796. It's all seized in there good. It holds the trim around the, the window thingy. And uh, so we gotta get that uh, extracted there and looks like we're finding more rust, very nice. I'm gonna clean up this edge here so we can expose all the spot welds and GM was extremely helpful in that they used about uh, 30 to 40 percent more spot welds than were necessary to hold this door skin on. So thank you GM. Now we're drilling those spot welds out and hoping that we got all of them, which of course we didn't, but uh, it's good to remain optimistic in times like this. Now we're using our various implements of destruction to slowly and tediously peel the skin off. I showed these tools in a previous video, so you can check that video out and uh, if you want to see what we're using, basically it's just some modified vice grips and a uh, prison shank that I made uh, while I was serving time in the pen for auto body indecency. Okay, we're still going away at this. This takes a long time, I'm not going to lie. It, uh, it would be nice to just grind the edge away. But uh, if I do that, then I got to re-weld the whole edge and the door skin doesn't have any supporting structure while it's off. So it's just going to flop around like crazy. So I, I like to leave the edge there so at least it has some strength to it while we're performing the modifications and repairs. In case you're wondering, this is all completely unnecessary, but uh, I'm hoping at some point all this work that we're doing will, will make sense, but it probably won't. Yeah, no, it definitely won't make sense at all. Or doesn't make sense, I suppose. Anyways, uh, the actual truth be told plan with these doors was to just throw them in the garbage and uh, use better doors for this project because nobody wants to watch me do these stupid, uh, tedious, fiddly little repairs when you can just uh, watch somebody cut a car apart and weld it back together in two days, which is a lot more exciting and a lot uh, easier for sure than having to repair garbage first. But uh, as it turns out, uh, you know, I'm not one of them big uh, highfalutin fancy YouTubers that can just, uh, you know, use his uh, exotic French car collection for cheap views. So we got to do things the hard way around here. We got to fix these junk doors. We got to, you know, do all the stupid, unnecessary stuff that's horrible to watch just to get our, our fill our quota of suffering in for the for the month. Speaking of which, man, I can't believe this guy hasn't got this door skin off yet. What the heck's taking so long? At some point, we got pretty uh, impatient. Oh, look, there's a bunch of spot welds around here. Hey, thanks, GM. Very helpful. These are also a pain to get out. They're right along the edge, and they're not uh, really any rhyme or reason to them. So uh, they, they definitely did not want these doors to get uh, disassembled way back in 1952 or 53, whenever they were putting this thing together. Using a seam splitter there, hoping we, no, nope, we didn't get all the spot welds. Of course not. Missed a whole pile of them. Great. Now you just can't win sometimes, but that's okay. We'll just keep at it. What else is there to do? Watch a bunch of dudes chase a ball around a field on the television. I don't know. Seems kind of weird to me. Well, this is certainly a lot more constructive. Uh, I suppose. Oh, look, another hidden spot weld on the outside.
the original plan for this uh, particular show was we were going to weld in this uh, door bottom on the inner structure here. And uh, it turns out this thing is a whole pile rustier than even I thought. So that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. Maybe we should do something fun. You know, instead of uh, wasting time fixing the really horrible rust that's preventing this from being a feasible project, uh, let's do uh, some fun cosmetic stuff. Let's uh, shave the door handle here. I think that'll, uh, that'll keep us busy for a couple minutes. that's gonna have to be removed here. It's attached to the door somehow. Not too sure how. Why, George, we're gonna figure it out, I tell ya. Yes, we are. So after you get this piece all carefully cut and trimmed to fit the way you want it, uh, what you want to do is you want to remove that and you want to set this piece somewhere where you're never going to find it again. But then what you want to do is you want to start all over again, remake this entire piece and get it all fitting. And that is the secret. And it's one of the things I've noticed none of the other YouTubers tell you about when you're doing this stuff. The real benefit to doing it this way is that as soon as you get this piece remade and fully welded in and finished out, the other piece will almost magically reappear and then you'll be able to use that piece on the other door. That's kind of what we're doing there. Um, you can see uh, some areas where we were able to just fusion tack it. Uh, I'm way out of practice on this, not that I was ever good at it, but uh, that's just where we're literally, I think there's some people call it pin tacking where you're just like, just trying to just barely fuse the, the metal together with the least amount of heat input possible. Uh, there's quite a few areas where we ended up having to add filler rod. Um, but you can see the spots where we had to add filler rod, the heat effect zone is a lot larger than where we were just doing the small pin tacks for the most part. I find, uh, you know, if it, if it doesn't want to fuse right away, 
then it's better to just add a filler rod rather than you know risk just blowing a hole through it and it's just something you have to practice obviously i'm quite out of practice with it the other challenge uh, when you're welding this old metal especially when it's been laying in the bush for the past 60 years is it's very difficult to get the metal 100 percent clean so there's always contaminants that start to come up to the surface if you're just trying to fusion weld it whereas if you weld it with filler material the filler material contains cleaning nutrients in it uh, so it helps to prevent those that those contaminants from coming up it cleans as it's welding whereas if you're just fusing there's no real if you're just trying to stick two dirty pieces of metal together and obviously it's going to be contaminated so uh that's just my observations i'm using uh 023 er70s-6 mig wire um i usually use 030 wire for sheet metal but i'm too much of a broke scumbag to actually go out and buy a roll of another roll of wire so we're stuck using this which i don't like this as much the 030 it just gives you a little bit extra meat on the weld you don't want like a huge ropey weld but um this it's a lot easier to undercut the weld and, and then you end up with a, a divot in the weld which you also isn't desirable but again we're going to make it work because I ain't got no money. Now uh, we're gonna fill this little hole here. There's our plug. So what we've got here is this just, if I put it in here right now, it'll drop through the hole. Uh, it kind of sits in there, but I know if I go to weld it, it's just gonna blast out and we're gonna have a mess on our hands. Technically we could just fill this with weld but the problem is is the weld is always a different material than the rest of the the metal even with the TIG weld so it's going to be a lot harder to finish that out if we just build that entirely out of weld so uh what i'll do is i'll just take my dolly here make sure the camera is on yep good job idiot okay and if we get this right, which we probably won't, I'm gonna hold the dolly directly underneath here so that we're doing a hammer on dolly type of scenario. Actually, I should use a, uh, I'm gonna use this dolly instead because it's got a little bit, it's got more crown to it. So, um, it'll help us uh, achieve this better. We don't want to just hammer a flat spot into it. Yeah, I got the dolly behind there and then I'll just take my hammer like so. Hammer on dolly. Good job. And we lost it. There it is. challenge here is just getting the dolly positioned so we're, we can get a good uh, smack on it. So what I've done is I've hammered on dollyed on this which has caused it to stretch and expand and now it actually fits tight in the hole here so there's no clamping necessary so because we were hammering on dolly we're stretching the metal and we're squishing it and so this has nowhere to go except to expand outwards and just take up that extra little slack so we should be good to tack weld it in now hopefully
That was overkill, uh, but I got excited and uh, carried away. Probably could have got away with just doing four tacks there. I uh, I like to just tack all it in position as much as possible because what can happen when you go to weld it is it'll want to droop or move around or up and down and then you'll end up getting a misalignment where this is higher than this metal or lower and then you get a weird ridge and stuff and that's very difficult to try and finish out. You want to try and keep this as flush as possible. All right, well, we've made a fine mess of that. I don't know if you can see. But uh, maybe not. We'll get the straight edge here, and then you can really get a visual of what's going on. All right, it's for straight edge. Show them what's happening. You can see everywhere we welded it. This isn't quite as bad, but you can still see daylight through there. But here's the real mess. That sunk in and not only did it just sink in where it was welded, but it pulled all the metal around it down right up to here. And all that was straight before, so all this low spot was caused by this being welded. And even up into here, there's a huge low spot. And this is this area is a lot stronger than this flat metal, so we've even managed to pull that in. Get the light on there. You can see it's really, really caved in here. And this is all, of course, caused by our welding here. Um, I do find that circular patches or square patches or small patches those things always have a lot more uh, warpage or distortion than you know if we were to just say cut this here and weld it weld this entire door all the way across here in one pass well then we're chasing that heat right across the panel so it doesn't have anywhere to to stop and start whereas here well we have a uh, a pretty we have two stopping and starting points because I'm not good enough to weld this all in one continuous pass and even if I was we would still have 
at least one start and stop point where the heat has you know by the time i weld it all the way around here and all the way to here this bot is already going to be cooling again and then we're reintroducing heat back into it so it's extra it's under extra tension and uh so that's the challenge of that it's like this is like taking a torch with a rosebud tip and just holding it on the door for however long it took to weld this and then you know obviously that's going to make quite a quite a mess whereas like i said if you're just chasing it across the panel and doing a full seam well then it doesn't the heat doesn't have any anywhere to concentrate in for one for very long you know you're just going right across in theory in one pass the reason this has pulled in so far is because we've heated this metal up past its yield point and we've caused it to shrink all this blue area here is the heat effect zone that's where the metal has been changed and it's shrunk meaning it's contracted and pulled in and that contracting action is what's pulled this entire area in because the metal doesn't around here doesn't have anywhere else to go it's all being forced into this this area that's been disturbed so there are a lot of different ways we could have minimized this we could have welded just you know maybe a half inch at a time let it cool hammered and dollied it and just worked our way around um, we could have mig welded it again very slowly let it cool whatever but it really doesn't matter you know how you do it there's always going to be that shrinking action and it might be less which I, in some cases you want to go for less if you're mig welding you don't want a lot of shrinkage because the mig weld is a lot harder to straighten back out with the tig weld it doesn't really matter because we can all hammer this out and i find just welding a little bit at a time with a tig weld um it's usually faster to just weld it all in one pass and then hammer and dolly it all back into shape than uh you know spending two days trying to weld it and it usually ends up being the same as if you just welded it all in one pass i always get comments from people saying that they can somehow weld things without any warpage or shrinkage at all and unless they're living in some alternate universe where the laws of physics don't apply that is a bunch of nonsense yes you can weld things and get very minimal distortion especially if you're using like a mig or whatever or really taking your time but again you're never getting away from from it 100 percent in theory you know the goal if you want to get really technical is to get the metal as close to its original state before it was welded so even though it'll never be 100 percent the same again we want this when we're done to be as if this had all just been one panel if we start doing stuff with like quenching it with air or quenching it with water what happens is this area becomes much harder than the surrounding metal and that makes it not only more difficult to finish back out but we've also now got a, a hard spot in the door which in theory you know in the middle of the door it's probably not going to matter if the metal is harder but just keep in mind if it gets harder then the metal is now more brittle so if we're doing an area that's critical or under a lot of stress like say we're sectioning in a pillar or something the last thing we want to do is be blowing compressed air on that because now that weld is going to be much harder than the area around it and now we've created an area of that pillar which is more brittle than the surrounding metal so if this thing was to get in an accident or something like that you're more likely you know the pillar is going to fail at that point and obviously that would be undesirable same deal you know if i was trying to weld up a crack in a fender well that metal has already become fatigued so if i go back and i i weld it and i quench it and and whatever well now it's even worse more fatigued or more brittle than it was before crack so it's just going to crack there again um so that's why i i definitely like tig welding for for doing cracks and stuff because we can really get a nice hot weld in we can anneal that metal and get it back as close as we can possibly can to its original state and there's really no uh 
you know, perfect way to get anything 100% again. You know, once it's been welded, the metal has now been damaged. But I mean, the only real way to get it 100% back to the way it was is to, you know, tool up and, and build a brand new fender, stamp out a brand new fender, and then it would be the same as it was. But, you know, obviously that's not realistic. So we just do the best that we can and try not to overthink things too much. Full disclosure, I'm absolutely not an expert on any of this. Uh, but I do know that metal does shrink after it's been welded. So no one's going to change my mind on that. And I do know that it uh, gets more brittle um, and hard if you try to quench it while it's hot. So uh, now that we've managed to offend everyone, let's uh, get back to our ruination of this door. So the people who are actually good at this, they can just weld this and then completely crush and planish the weld totally flat again, where it requires almost no, you know, finishing at all. I find uh, I'm not good enough at welding where I can, I can do that. I have to knock the head of the weld off in order to get the desired results that I'm after. So when I do that, I just use a, uh, a 50 grit grinding. This is like a Rolock disc. They come in, I buy these, they're like a three inch disc, but this is one that's been cut down to smaller. And all I'm trying to do with that is just knock the head of the weld off. As soon as I start seeing the grinder touch the surrounding metal, then I stop. I don't just keep digging and you can see, you know, there's still some areas where it was slightly misaligned and where the weld isn't exactly you know, flat yet, but uh, we'll be correcting that in the next steps to come. But I just want to knock the any of the uh, the head off the weld. You know, the weld is isn't the best, and it's got inconsistencies. So if I go to try and just hammer this all flat again, anywhere where there's inconsistencies in the weld, it's going to leave a, a divot or or what have you. So that's just. The only way I've been able to uh, to get the results I'm after. This patch we made is made out of 18 gauge. The door is a lot closer to 19 gauge, but so we've got a little bit more meat on this, on the pieces we put in. However, uh, using any kind of grinder uh, will remove metal very quickly, especially these small ones like that, the three inch or the cut down ones or especially the belt sanders you can really dig a hole very quickly and remove a lot of material very fast and obviously that is kind of undesirable I would think but I'm no expert. Well, we managed to remove a large portion of the welding damage just by 
planishing out this weld, hammering it on dolly so that we're stretching that weld area back out. We managed to pull, you know, a lot of the low out. It's still, you know, maybe a 32nd or so of an inch low through here. Um, the challenge with door handles, of course, is that there's a lot of uh, additional damage around them, usually just from people slamming the door for, you know, 70 some odd years. It's always going to be, you know, kicked in a bit or even just the way the factory stamps the holes. That can also cause some issues in the surrounding metal. So I think uh, the next step here is I'm just going to take a, uh, just a file and just knock off any high spots that are on the welds now that we've planished it then we'll put some sort of a guide coat on here we'll run a block over it and you'll be able to see that this is still quite quite wavy and then we'll start kind of working those areas out but you saw just how much closer this is this thing was totally ruined before and now we're kind of in the the zone where you know we could just do body work on it just about um just from directly hammering on these welds here so you know the door was fairly straight before it wasn't 100 percent but so that means that after it was welded all the damage was caused from welding there wasn't any you know there's no point in trying to hammer way out here to get that huge low spot out because this was the culprit here now Again, like I said, we do have very slight low here still and some waves through here. So we're just going to start chasing that out now. Well, I'm not going to act like this is a flawless uh, repair here because it's not. It's just uh, it's it's as good as it needs to be for now, I think. And uh, I just don't see much point in trying to make it absolutely perfect when there's going to be some pretty extensive things happening to this door. See the edge is still a little mangled there from us hacking it off this door has some pretty uh pretty serious stuff that's going to be happening to it it's going to be getting chopped as well as sectioned and then i think the other plan is going to be fadeaways welded on so you know i don't really want to like totally spend too much time on a little area like that when we're going to be basically welding across the entire door and just absolutely making a mess of it still but uh there it is and you know to be fair um 
The reason we did it this way is because when we did the last shaved handle on this door, a lot of you were saying that this wasn't a very good job. And that was really hurtful, what you said there. Because I, I think, you know, to me, this actually looks really good. Like I really, I can't see any difference between this side, to my eyes anyways, between the side we just did and the side that I already did. And I worked really hard on this. So you, you guys have to remember that I have feelings too, you know? So don't say things like that. At the end of the day, both handles have been shaved. There's no right or wrong way to do this stuff uh, as long as you end up with the same results. And I think we have. I know it seems like a lot of unnecessary work to take the skin off, but uh, eventually this will make sense. I, at least to anybody who's actually watching. And uh, there's just the sheer extent of the modifications that are going to be going into this door. We could do it with the skin on, but it's not going to turn out better that way. And it's going to end up just being more work in the long run trying to work around it because we are going to have to section through here on the inner panel. I can't just, on the inner panel anyways, I can't just chop the bottom off to section it. I have to go through here because of the way that the bottom of the door is shaped and it fits into the cab. It is going to have to be cut through here. The outer skin, we can just trim off the bottom. But there's also a good chance this is going to have fadeaway fenders on it. So that also adds a whole another level of complexity to the whole thing. If I have to weld those on all through the center of the door, then that's, you know, it's going to be nice to kind of have some access there to, to work that. The other thing we're going to be doing in addition to the chop is I am, these are 52, 53 doors and we're going to be making them back into the earlier style doors which just have the one piece glass instead of the vent window. So that means having this skin off, I've now got a totally open access where I can put in my window channels, get that set up. Obviously there's no window channel at the front here so I can build the bracketry for that. Depending on how the cab is chopped, I may also have to slice these doors right in here and just tilt them in a little bit just to get everything lined up. I do know that I have to for sure widen the back of the roof when the roof comes down. So that could possibly change the geometry here. And if I do have to do that, then I'm gonna have to change the geometry of the inner window tracks. So again, it's a lot easier to get that sorted out with the skin off because what we don't want is the glass to come up like this and then have to make a bend like that because glass doesn't bend like that. So we need the, the shot or the channel for the, the glass to be all one straight shot all the way through. The nice thing about these doors though is that there is um, enough crown on them where I can get away with re-angling these if I have to and changing the angle of that glass. A lot of, some doors they're very flat skin and so you, you have to maintain that original geometry there and you can't lean it in. But like I said, we've got plenty of meat here to, uh, to reconfigure that, but it is so much easier with the skin off. Anyways, sorry for the lame video this week. Uh, as a lot of you know, uh, things haven't been going too well for me lately. Both of my Lambos got repossessed. Uh, all my employees quit and lost my shop. So I'm just really trying to get my life back on track here. Uh, don't worry though, I'll be back to my usual obnoxious self very soon, but uh, just in the meantime, there's gonna be some transitions uh, as I uh, kind of dodge the, the creditors and, and all the, the people that uh, want me dead. So uh, again, thank you all for your patience. And we'll see you again soon with uh, more on the chicken truck project. Hopefully something a little more spectacular than what we did here today.